So anyway, I said to the lady, you know, get the fuck out the queue. It's not your fucking turn. And I got in there and I got, you know, 100 grams of fucking pastrami. Like, you know, that fat bitch had to wait her turn. You know, Dave. I Sorry, I didn't realize we started to apologize. <clears throat> we have talked about self-awareness, identity, introspection in our podcast. In season two, we have talked about how to understand people, how to learn more about people around us, how to be more mindful of each other, showing kindness and empathy. Dave? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm listening. Keep going. Unfortunately, we have not been demonstrating these values as a team behind closed doors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, instead of putting anyone on disciplinary today like I usually do and the usual finger pointing, he said, she said, what I'm going to do is read you all a story to remind us all of the importance of being kind to each other. How does that sound? Oh, that's a splendid idea. I love it. Fucking hell. Already swearing. Well, I mean, we're a bit old for that, aren't we? Yes, we are. But unfortunately, you just haven't taken anything on board. Look how horrible and mean you are to me, to Angelina, to Rob. And we all know what you did with Angela. Ran through her like a train through a tunnel. <laughs> Shame on you. Dave? Sorry, that was a little bit graphic, wasn't it? Back to Kitty's Hour. This is the story of Bob and the Beast. This story reminds us why we need empathy, not just to make the world a better place, but how we can grow as individuals, as societies. Are we ready? Are we all cosy? Yes. Are you going to be playing the role of the Beast? Oh my God, Dave, will you just shut your bloody mouth? You see? Oh, look what you just made me say. You're just as mean as I am. Both of, well, actually, Angelina's not very mean. She's quite sweet, but, well, sickly so. But you're... Thank you. It's not really a compliment. I still take it as one. Hmm. Once upon a time, a predatory beast lived in the forest near a village. The beast would roar menacingly at nights to terrify all the villagers. One stormy night, a little boy named Bob went up to the forest chasing his pet dog who was accidentally let loose from the harness. As Bob reached the middle of the forest, the thunderstorms discharged. The flashes of lights revealed his worst nightmare. There it was, the deadly beast his mother warned him about every single night. Beast indeed matched all the scary descriptions in the story he had heard. As Bob was watching this beast to his horror, he noticed his leg was bleeding. His paw was pricked by a sharp, long thorn. Wait, sorry, am I meant to sit here and just listen to the whole thing? Listen. And be quiet, please. And be quiet. Exactly. Thank you, Angela. Well, like a literally fingers on lip situation. Yes. Is that the case? I might go and make a quick sandwich if that's all right. No, Dave, you need to be present. Fuck me. And listen, because I am going to test you on it. I, li- I can't. I'm not going to lie. I haven't listened to a single. I don't, <gasps> there's a beast and a boy and there's some. Carry on. I, I'm only messing. <laughs> carry on. Carry on. I don't know what the fuck she's doing. Okay. Bob noticed that his paw was pricked by a sharp, long thorn. And as he looked deeper into his eyes, Bob saw tears. The beast wasn't monstrous. He was in deep pain and badly hurt. Bob's fear quickly replaced with pity and empathy. So he approached the beast and pointed at his leg to show that he understands his pain and he will help him extract the thorn. The beast endured a lot of pain as the thorn was being removed and it was so difficult for Bob to remain calm. But they both knew this was the only way 
to restore his health. And not only that, Bob knew this will bring some peace and understanding in his village. And so it did. After the thorn was extracted, the beast became immediately relieved. Bob and the beast became friends. In fact, the beast was his second pet. How nice. So Bob came back and started telling the villagers that the beast is actually not dangerous. He was in terrible, terrible pain. But he had no capacity to understand what was actually hurting him. He was crying for help. And to his blind distress, he acted horrifically, which made us all feel threatened by him. The moral of the story is that the beast is all of us. The thorn is a metaphor for our traumas, our darkest fears, our deepest insecurities, our worries, guilt, disappointment, failures, and anything that troubles our lives. The good news is, an imaginary Bob is always beside us. Oh, no, that's not true. I just want to say right now, anybody out there seeing any sort of imaginary Bobs is absolutely destined for the loony bin. Fucking nut jobs. Don't you understand the meaning of metaphor, Dave? Well, look, as far as also as pulling these metaphorical thorns out, anxiety, pain, all these things, you need to harness them, keep them deep inside them and use them as motivation. Don't get rid of them. They're a potential superpower. Yes, and I acknowledge what you are saying. Fear, anxiety and our traumas can be a motivating factor in life. They can give us the push we need. It can be quite arousing. I get that but it becomes a problem when your anxiety your fears your trauma just consumes you it becomes really intense to a point that it just leads to a burnout which then becomes counterproductive to your personal growth it also interferes with our ability to function in our everyday life so we're talking about the traumas that are just so intense that you just get hijacked by them and instead of taking accountability you blame everything around you and other people for who you are I agree and then coming back to what I meant by imaginary Bob is this is our intuition right when we tune into our intuition it will tell us the story behind our emotions. So if you fine tune into some of the discomfort you're experiencing, basically just sit with the discomfort and speak to it. It will answer you back. It really will. And you're not going crazy. It's a great way of understanding your emotions, your thoughts, what you are experiencing. Ask yourself, why are you feeling like this? Mm. And the voices in your head will speak to you. And that can take us to the source of distress and help us come up with constructive solutions. Right? Well, I mean, I wouldn't want to comment. As a, I agree know. completely, Suman. Of course you agree with Suman. Uh, what? I think your bandwidth's a little low. A little bit like your IQ. Dave! What have I just said about being kind to each other and showing some respect? It's all right, Suban. Just ignore him. Why don't you just try to show empathy just for the next 30 seconds? And let's see how you feel. 30 seconds. Yes, 30 seconds. Start the clock. It's going to make you feel wonderful. Just say something nice. Start with me. Fuck me. Okay. I mean, you're not completely boring. Is that all? I have had moments when we've been together where I have almost yeah? preferred it to yeah? sleeping. Well, that's not really a compliment. There were times where I didn't want to slap you. <gasps> and that's as high as praise I can give. 
physical violence against women. Oh, no, real no. chauvinist. No, I said there was times where I didn't want to slap you. Yeah, that makes it really, really better. Well, at least I'm not kissing people on the lips like that bloody Spanish FA guy. Did you see that? What? Oh, my God. And you guys say, oh, it's so... We know everything about women and politics. You don't even know about the Women's World Cup. We've been watching. Sorry, I was very busy planting trees for Suman's birthday. Excuse you. Oh, yes. Oh, tree planting, yes. Harvesting your bush as usual. What's wrong with planting trees? Well, look. Basically, the Spanish women beat the English women 1-0. And then, when they're going to get their medals, the head of the Spanish, like, football federation or whatever mm -hmm. he grabs her with two hands and <gasps> kisses her on the lips no and obviously now it's become a whole thing oh my god but i mean you guys really need to get more clued up on your you know 2020 2023 feminism i mean it's, it's a shame you don't know about this it's a massive moment well you will be pleased to know one of our future episodes will be about what women want oh it will be about how to better understand women. Right. Aimed at men, of course. And I know that men have accused women of being complicated, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. confusing, giving mixed messages, being indecisive, yes. which are all myths, by the way. So we are going to be talking about what goes inside a typical women's mind <laughs> oh my god and we will also be open to answering frequently asked questions so if you haven't already follow us on our instagram page send us a dm and let us know what questions you want us to answer about women oh i can't wait coming back to our story so bob is our imaginary friend it's our intuition the thorn is a metaphor for our pain for our triggers dave yes you're listening yes yeah, sorry i just had to mute you very quickly just m mute myself i mean i was absolutely listening to you i just sorry there's just someone trying to speak to me i do apologize do you have company right now yes don't tell me it's marjorie please no, no, it's nothing like that. It's just, it's just geezers come round trying to fix my fridge. I do apologise. Fridge? What happened to your fridge? Well, I fell into it. Can you make up something more realistic? Okay, look, what actually happened was I was fighting with my friend and he threw me into the fridge. <gasps> what? No, mess around fighting, play fighting. Oh. He did stab me quite, quite a few times, though. <laughs> What kind of a friends do you hang out with? Just good lads, good honest fellas. Yeah, who shove each other into fridges, really. Nice company. Anyways, this story teaches us two things. Firstly, about introspection. The thorn is a metaphor for what troubles us, what brings us pain and discomfort. In effort to numb the pain and to minimise feeling guilty, we often have this plaster sticking approach where we lash out on people around us, blame our environment, the government, our neighbours, instead of taking accountability. So the thorn remains lodged in place. The beast, as we know, was immediately relieved after he went through that difficult healing process. It's like when you get scared at night and you fear that there might be a monster under the bed. Come on, we've all feared that. But unless you look under the bed, confront your fears and sit there with that discomfort and that emotion, those feelings will lose their power over you. And the second thing we learn is the importance of showing empathy. Not everyone is who they say they are, just because someone is showing anger doesn't mean that they are a nasty person. There's always a story behind people's emotions. Now, we have talked about empathy a lot, but how do we actually practice it? I'm going to do a quick activity with Dave and Angelina, and you listening out there can also join us as well. 
Let's find a comfortable position. Sit back, relax, and take a deep breath. Okay, now imagine your breath is inflating a big bubble filled with love, empathy, and as you inflate more love and empathy into this bubble, it becomes bigger and bigger. And you'll begin to feel like Suman. Just the bubble, not you. Right. Okay. You're not getting fatter. Can you not interrupt when Suman is trying to do an activity with us, Dave? Please. I'm just trying to liven her story up. I mean, I'm absolutely sleeping here. Okay. Why don't you just take a deep breath and hold on to it? Big enough that in an imaginary world, it contains your whole body. Filled with love and kindness and empathy. And then it becomes even bigger. So big that it starts to include everybody around you. They're all included. Everybody. Yes. So my bubble contains myself, you... Angelina, Rob, everybody around me, and you're all part of my team. I value you. I honour your presence. And today marks the dawn of a beautiful day for us as a team. Why? <laughs> because what, <laughs> Dave? What? Because what we were just doing. <laughs> that marks a new day. Fuck off. What else can I do to teach you being nice to me? Money. Look, all I wanted you to realise is that we're part of a team. We should welcome each other as who they are. We're all flawed. Nobody's perfect. But we can choose to see each other more clearly. Okay? And stop trying to figure out who deserves respect and who deserves empathy yes. and who deserves love. Because nobody deserves it. So don't try and even bother th figuring it out. That's what you're saying, right? No, because everybody deserves a love. Everybody? Yeah. Yes, Dave, even you. Bloody murderers, pedos, serial killers. Let's not get into that territory. I'm talking about us as a team. Right, okay. Me, you, Angelina, even Angela in heaven, and even Rob in his prison cell, wherever he is. I still haven't met this Rob, but the more I listen about him, I kind of think I don't really want to meet him. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said this about him. I No, Suman, you're saying the truth, and it needs to be heard. Angelina, he's a piece of human trash. Dave? Shit under your shoe. Remember what I've just taught you. He can't be worse than you. Well, at least I'm fun. Well, fun can be many things. Yes, fun can be me and you on a Friday night having a few drinks. I don't drink. I'm an angel. I didn't... Oh, you have no corporeal food. Uh, what, you just... You don't eat anything at all? Who, me? Do you drink anything at all, just not alcohol? Of course. I drink water, milk, orange juice, everything that's healthy. Well, there you go, then. We can go out and have a little, you know, a little drinky-poo. We can go for an ice cream. Suman, you are not invited. Uh, by the way, my laptop's dying. Hold on, I need to go get my charger. My laptop's dying. Okay. Suman, you're absolutely invited. I would love to share a smoothie or an ice cream cup with you. Oh, amazing. But you know what? Actually, I'm quite busy with the next episode. So why don't you and Dave go out this Friday? And also, I think you and Dave need to clear the air one to one. So I think it will be better if I'm not there and you can just have a one to one with each other and see how it goes. Yeah? That sounds good in theory, but I just don't trust him. He has that look on his face like he's always up to something. Yeah, that's why I said ice cream, because ice cream vans just across the road. And I will keep an eye on you and him. Plus, I'll also have police on my speed dial. Okay? 
Oh, thank you. And I know there's a thing between devils and angels, but on Earth, we are all very big on diversity and inclusion. So it's really important that you both get to know each other and learn about each other's cultures, traditions, values, and hopefully that can help you both become friends. And then we might not have this situation where we're just arguing with each other every single episode. Sorry about that. So, Dave, I have set you both on a friendship date. Yay! This Friday. I love that for us. Yeah. Ice cream and a fondle in the park. And for dinner, why don't you invite Rob as well? I don't think that's a good idea, to be honest. I know, but I don't want Rob to feel excluded, especially after giving this talk about empathy and working as a team. You know what he's like around pretty girls. He can't control himself. He's a babbling idiot. Angelina's different. She can discipline him. No, she's stunning. That's what's different. She's even more beautiful than the average girl, and he just won't be able to handle himself. He'll be making all sorts of rude jokes and bumbling, and he won't be pleasant. He won't be very nice. Are you complimenting me, Dave? Well, yes, I threw you a little compliment. I'm not totally evil. But last time you told me I was ugly and need makeup. Oh, she still remembers that. She's mentioned well, it a yes. few times. She's obviously That's obviously a sore spot for her. Well, I look, all I say is, I don't remember what I said that in that moment. I mean, either you've gotten better looking or my eyesight's got better. I don't know, but I think I'm seeing things as they are. Okay, but then don't say it again. No. She's really sensitive, as you can see. I can see that. I mean, maybe she was unattractive in school, and that's why it's quite difficult for her. Because obviously she's so beautiful now, and I find that often girls who are pretty but were ugly in school, they have this sort of difficult relationship with their looks. Well, you can't really offend me because all angels are beautiful. We are just born beautiful. People call us beautiful whenever they see us. But I mean, there must be some angels that are more beautiful than others. Well, that's up to God to decide, not you. No, I didn't say I was deciding, but I mean, there must be some angels you look at and feel inferior to. Uh, Dave, I know what you're trying to do here. What? What you always trying to do with people, instill self-doubt and jealousy. No, I'm not instilling. They're already there. All I'm doing is dredging them up so we can get through them. If you don't dredge things up, you can't solve them. Look at her now. You need to use your empathy to get rid of the anxieties. And right now, you're hiding your insecurities and jealousy of other angels deep inside and pretending they're not there. I'm trying to pull them out like that thorn from that lion's paw. Sorry, I mean that beast's paw. Why don't you go on this friendship date? Yes. And let's not go deeper into extracting anyone's thorns or horns or whatever. For the first friendship date, just take it easy. Just get to know each other on a surface level. Just small talk, you know? I agree. Right. Yeah? Let's not go too deep for the first time. Okay. No, I think first time, just play around the pool. Don't dive in. I'll make sure not to leave my drink or my ice cream unattended. No, I listen, I'm I am a a beast and a whore, but I'm a gentleman nonetheless, and I would never spike a lady's drink. That is not my way. I don't trust you. Suman knows me. She knows that's not my style. Yes, you prefer getting into heads and influencing rather than... Exactly. Yeah, you enjoy that, don't you? I would never rape or murder or beat or kill. That's what I make other people do by getting in their minds. But me, myself, sully these beautiful hands with such crimes. Are you mad? A gentleman does not do this way. Sorry. We learn in heaven that all devils are evil. So I'm just being cautious. Propaganda. My dear fellow, propaganda. Hmm.